here we are. This is our display case. We've got our Egyptian objects on this shelf and this shelf. Let's go and take a little closer look. So here we have a collection of arrowheads. These are 4th and 5th century BC. So we're looking at the later period of the Egyptian times. And what do you think that they might have been used for? So it's quite difficult to say for certain. Obviously they're, they're arrowheads. They could have been equally useful for warfare or indeed for hunting. It's made out of clay and all you do is you fill it up with oil, uh, put a little wick in and then you light it and this would have been um, a typical object that you'd have found in Egyptian houses. What do you mean by Greco-Roman? Just another name for the final period of ancient Egypt. Alexander the Great conquered Egypt and after he died his general Ptolemy established his own dynasty. Um, that dynasty spoke Greek as their main language um, and then after that the Roman rule took over Egypt. <laughs> have a statue of Osiris. It's made out of copper alloy. Um, Osiris was the Egyptian god of death and also the underworld and rebirth. So he's depicted wearing his distinctive crown. That's what you can see at the top here. He's also holding the crook and the flail, which you can see in his hands just here. Now this was a later symbol of pharaonic rule and also represented the fertility of the kingdoms. very very faded now but um, back when it was produced it would have been a really bright shiny blue colour. So it's quite small so what would it actually be used for? I would imagine that something as small as this was probably used for coal. So we've got a selection of necklaces here. On the top here you can see the three bone pendants. They're actually from Badari, and they're actually older than all the rest of the beads here. Now, there's a bit of a problem with bead necklaces, because beads were very, very plentiful. And um, when the Tut mania took hold, when they found the tomb of Tutankhamun, what generally happened with bead neck beads is they were collected up and restrung, and then sold as tourist souvenirs. And that obviously makes display necklaces very, very difficult because what you often have is beads from multiple tombs ending up on the same string. This object is Shabti, or sometimes you might see it written as Yushabti. We find them in tombs and what they are is they're little model servants because the Egyptians believed that when you get into your afterlife, you're actually expected to do a bit of work. Uh, so a lot of the time people would have these shabtis produced so that they can do all the work for them once they get into the afterlife. They often have hieroglyphs on them and hieroglyphs would tell you the name of the shabti. Sometimes they're based on real life servants or advisors um, and also all the incantations that were needed to actually bring it back to life. So earlier on in the week we asked you if you could spot the fakes and we're going to reveal the answers. So the first one is this tile here which is uh, a depiction we think of Horus. Our second fake is this one here which is another tile and it's got hieroglyphs on it and Horus again. It was accession so it's fooled somebody um, but we've since found out that it's fake so well done if you spotted either of those. This film is part of the Investigate Learnings Archaeology Festival 2020 Going Digital. Thank you for listening.